Okay, interesting. That that fits the bill, really, for Liverpool. Because when I seen the fact that he'd been playing a little bit more advanced in Italy, I thought, well, Liverpool have got a plethora of number eights now with Graven Burge, McAllister, Sabozlai, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, I think. Do we need another one? But if he is more of a defensive minded, that makes a bit more sense. Um, you mentioned what will probably come under the category of his strengths there, but if you really had to sort of nail down what he was exceptional at, what would it be? Would it be the ball, the tension, the winning the ball back, that type of stuff? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I don't want to to limit him to being a, a player who is only who is only good defensively, because obviously he 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 he, he can still put his keep uh, teammates in good positions and he's not throwing away the ball offensively, but I would say, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he just has a great eye for the ball. He great positioning, really, really smart player. And uh, I think when you, when you watch him play, you, you don't think that's a 22 year old that is, is playing. He, he is, he's playing with the experience of, of, a, of an older player. And, and also I think, I mean, obviously, Liverpool is one of the biggest clubs in the world, so I, I don't want to compare any anything to that. But I think it should be mentioned that Brunby is 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 the most popular club in Denmark, and there's a lot of pressure on the players there as well. A lot of expectations. It's the club that the most media is covering, and yeah, obviously, Genoa is, is a big club in Italy too. So he has he has tried to play with a lot of pressure. He has to try to be under the the microscope at all time and he has tried to play for for a fan base who is demanding success and and winning matches, which I think is a it's a big difference to a lot of the other players who are coming from smaller clubs in Denmark. For example, all the stars who are going away from North Zealand, they they are creating a lot of talents like Kudos who who played uh, plays for West Ham now. But at that club, for example, there's much less pressure. There's no fans. There's no media, really. So we often see players from some of those clubs struggle when they go abroad because suddenly suddenly you have a teammate who, who is tackling you hard for your spot in the team and you have media who, who are very critical and, and all of that. He has already tried and been through everything from, from a very young age. So, so I think... Like on a personal level, that I think that's a big uh, advantage for him as well compared to many other Danish talents. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that definitely bodes well, doesn't it? But there is no, as you mentioned, there. There's not really many pressures like playing for the Liverpool Football Club, albeit. I would suggest that us as fans give young players and new players a little bit of time to uh, to adapt to their new surroundings. Um, in terms of weaknesses, then, is there any way you think, you mentioned earlier on, his passing game's improving. Is there any more areas you need to continue to improve on? I think he can definitely contribute more offensively uh, and, and um, I mean, get a bigger role offensively, uh, take more, take more responsibility. Also physically he can, he can grow. He's still a quite, quite slim player. Um, and, and I think especially playing in more physical English football and more tackles and everything, he could probably have advantage of, of uh, gaining a little bit of extra kilos of muscle and, and, and that, but mostly from a physical standpoint, he, he's in pretty great shape. He, he is not the type of guy you need to take out because he gets uh, he gets tired at the end of games or anything like that. But but I would say maybe a little a little bit of of extra muscles. But yeah yeah, usually it comes with the age as well, of course. Yeah, we we've, we've seen that with Trent actually come into the side yeah. after you come through the academy as a slender kid, and you think, oh okay, but all of a sudden he's an absolute beast himself. Um, just away from the football inside of things, ever so slightly, you mentioned a moment ago how he's had to deal with quite intense pressure and scrutiny, being a Bromby and stuff like that. Obviously, he's made the move away from his homeland in Denmark to Italy, new surroundings. So he clearly doesn't feel like he's faced by anything so him personally attitude wise you've seen a lot of him a lot more than we have nothing no real red flags there I guess I don't think so I think it's it's also a huge advantage for Liverpool that he has already lived abroad and uh, he, he already has that experience obviously he speaks English already uh, I mean I don't know exactly what at what level but growing up in Denmark you definitely learn English so it should be quite easy for him to adjust and and integrate at, at, at Liverpool for sure. Um, at, at a young age, he had a habit of, of picking up some um, sometimes unnecessary cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mentioned that red card he got in the championship match, but he looking at his statistics and, and everything, it, it kind of went away in the end. I think it was mostly a young, 
a young player settling in in the team and uh, yeah, not really a big concern anymore. No, it doesn't sound like it. Maturing physically and uh, mentally, it appears. Um, got to ask you this. I ask everybody this when I do these type of shows. Um, who would you compare him to in terms of style, in terms of the way he goes about his business? And I've got to say this on this occasion. Is he the next Jan Mulby? <laughs> I, I never really got to watch Jan Mulby, unfortunately. Uh, but from what I, I, I've heard from... Uh, from my my father who watched him a lot, I don't think so. As I understand it, he was much more forward playing, uh, long passes, creative things, which doesn't really um, it's not really Frendrup's game. I think one comparison that comes to mind, and 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 uh, I hope you don't take this the wrong way because he was not too good for Liverpool. But I think Christian Paulsen, for example, um, he was one of the. Yeah, I can see in your face you're not really sure where I'm going here, but I'm listening. <laughs> But before he went to Liverpool, he was one of the greatest defensive midfielders that that Denmark had. Was really really good at um, really good at Sevilla, um, and of course earned that move to both Liverpool and Juventus. Um, and I think he has some kind of the same intelligence on the pitch, the same the same cleverness with positioning, and of course the same kind of uh, he's a hard player and. Uh, He's not afraid of tackling and he's not afraid of tackling players who are much bigger than him. So I think if, if we are staying in, in the Danish uh, department, I, I would compare him to to him. And uh, yeah, then, then but but let's say the Sevilla Christian Paulsen and not the, the Liverpool Christian Paulsen. As yeah, long as not the Liverpool one. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not quite working out is an understatement, I think, for uh, Christian Paulsen. But you're right. Funnily enough, I had this conversation the other day in the round, something else. And yes, it's Liverpool time, didn't work out at all. But a good footballer, like a, a really good footballer, you know what I mean? He gets unfairly criticised from Liverpool fans because some Liverpool fans just think, that's all he ever was, the Liverpool version, but there were different versions of him. Um, yeah, I think he got like 100 games for Denmark and, yeah, and obviously yeah. he played in that Sevilla team with Dani Alves and uh, that won the UEFA Cup and so on. So, yeah, he was he was really, really and good for Schalke as well before yeah, that. You, you don't move to Juventus or Liverpool without being a, a top of football, I think it's fair to say. Um, on Fendrup, he's represented Denmark at pretty much every youth level. Um, is he? I think he's been involved in some squads maybe at the Danish national team. I don't think he's played just yet, but does he feel like a future star of that Denmark team? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. I think it's uh, right now we have uh, we have Thomas Delaney, we have Christian Erko, but most of the cent- uh, Christian Eriksen, of course, but most of the central midfielders, Pierre Hybe as well, they're all around thirty or on the wrong side of thirty already. So there's definitely a generation shift coming, and 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 with him performing the way he is, I think it's it's only a matter of time. And and actually, I wouldn't be surprised if if he gets his debut this this spring, and and maybe even is is one of the players considered for for the Euro this summer because because he is uh, it's it's definitely only a matter of time before he he takes that last step. Interesting. Okay, and just finally, um, just to round off, then obviously the links to Liverpool are genuine by all accounts. Um, Premier League ready? Does he suit Jurgen Klopp? Um, and also just to sort of finish, how high do you rate his potential? How far can this kid go? I think it definitely suits the, the style because when he came into the Bundesliga team originally, actually, we had, we also had a German head coach, and uh, that was the most physical team that has played in in uh, in the Danish league, where they were, I mean, they they were running several kilometers more than all the opponents every game, really, really intense, high pressure, super aggressive style. So he got that in with with his blood basically uh, during that time and the same team that won the league he's played aggressively I think they've been a little bit more passive in in Italy mm-hmm. but but yeah that aggressive style and and the kicking pressure and counter attacks that would I think that would suit him really well and and I mean he he's not like a light, lightning fast player but but when he has the ball at his feet he can definitely move it forward fast as well and and, and has a good eye for the right options when when progressing an attack. So I think he would he would fit quite well with with the uh, with the Liverpool style. And I also think his stamina levels are well suited for, for all the matches in the Premier League. Um, I don't think that would be an issue uh, at, at least not not long term to to settle to playing a lot of matches because he's already always been in great shape and always managed to to take really good care of himself, being really professional. In terms of, of of the of the level, I mean, 
I, I think Liverpool is, is huge. So it, I, I, I cannot say for sure that he definitely will be the next Fabinho or anything like that, because that's just such an insane level that it, it's, it's tough to predict. But I, I think if he's given the chance, I don't think there's any... I wouldn't fear that he falls through or anything like that. Um because he, he grows with the challenges and, and he, he's professional, he's smart. Um if if it's enough to be a key player for Liverpool, that, that's difficult to say. But but I, I think he will definitely be some someone that the fans appreciate a lot and somebody who can be really popular for for the way he acts, the way he plays and and, and carries himself. I think that's something he's definitely somebody that that fans will 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 like hey thank you so much for checking out the content today if you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people uh, then head to redmenplus.com join as a legend tier subscriber you're gonna get free merchandise merchandise codes you're gonna get in our discord and you're gonna get your name at the end of youtube videos yes redmenplus.com legend tier status